Uh, give our drama ministry a big hand. That was good, wasn't it? Uh, this is going to be so good. So I want you to get your pens and pads out and ready to go to school. We're going to learn some really valuable information that's going to really help us really understand the Bible. And so if you don't mind, let's jump right into this tonight. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go with me tonight to the book of Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And when you get to Galatians chapter 3, let's look again at verse 13, 14, and verse 29. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, 14, and 29. I'm going to talk about redemption from the curse of sickness. Now, to be redeemed means simply that you've been delivered or that the uh, deliverance has been purchased for you or it is the picture of a ransom that has been paid for you so you can go free. And so when we talk about being redeemed from poverty, that means our deliverance from poverty has been purchased and the ransom has been paid so we can go free from it. Same thing is true to be redeemed from sickness. We've been delivered from it. The ransom has been paid and therefore we can go free from those things. Now let's read again Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, 14 and 29. Let's read. Ready? Read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 29. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now notice in verse 13, the anointed one has redeemed us. He's Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us. He purchased our freedom from curse or the doom of the law and its condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us. But notice why did he do all of that in verse 13? That the blessing of Abraham might come on everybody else that's not a natural Jew. So notice what he said that he has delivered us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is the curse of the law? The curse of the law, ladies and gentlemen, is very simply, listen, you can find it. The only way to find out what the curse of the law is, you got to go there. And uh, it's found uh, in the first five books of the Old Testament. The first five books of the Old Testament is where you find the law. Now, as we go back to these books or the law, we find the curse or the punishment. There was a punishment instituted for breaking the law, for breaking God's law. And so back then it was like, well, here's the law and there's a consequence or the punishment for breaking the law. And that was the curse, hence the curse of the law. So in the New Testament, in the book of Galatians, when he says that Christ has redeemed us or purchased our freedom from the curse of the law, then we've got to understand what, what, it, what does it entail, the, the, the law? Well, it is threefold. This curse or the punishment for breaking the, 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 the law is a threefold punishment or curse. Number one, poverty. Number two, sickness. And number three, spiritual death. So when the law was not honored, then the punishment for breaking the law, the curse that would come as a result of not keeping the law would be sickness, poverty, and spiritual death. But now notice here in this verse, it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Glory be to God that he became a curse for us that we may have the blessing of Abraham on our lives. Now, the scripture also makes clear that the things that were written aforetime, in other words, the things in the Old Testament, the things that were written aforetime 
were written for our what? Learning. So that we through them might have hope. So you don't just throw the Old Testament away. You take note of what's written there and learn some things so that it can produce hope in your life. I mean, the new, that's written in the New Testament. It's saying for you, you know, people go around, we well, all live by the Old Testament, whatever. You, you, you learn some things from people who have already gone through it. And then you learn how to rejoice even more and say, ooh, look at what they got. But Christ has redeemed me from that. Amen. So that through those old, those things that we might have hope. Well, tonight we're specifically going to deal with this area of sickness. And you're going to really learn some things about Bible translation. Maybe you've been reading some things one way and you've always thought it was that way. And, and we're going to really clear some things up, especially in those areas where it said God cursed them and God made them sick and God bought evil. And you think like, wait a minute, I'm confused that right there. It said God did that. Well, what was the real deal there? Let's get started. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Turn to your neighbor and say, I have been redeemed, have been redeemed. From, poverty, from poverty, from sickness, from sickness and, spiritual and spiritual death. All right. Now, before we proceed, let's look at what the curse of the law entails in this area of sickness. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is going to bless you tonight. I promise you. Deuteronomy 28. And... Uh, Let's look at verse, move this up some, Deuteronomy 28, verse, uh, uh oh, okay, we're fine, verse 15 through 22, and then I'll call some more scriptures out. Let's look at 15 through 22. These are, this, this talks about the curse that comes as a result of disobedience, uh, verse 15 through 22. But it, came, but it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall thou be in the city. Curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of your kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Curse shall thou be when thou comest in. Curse shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursings, vexations, and rebuke, and all that thou sittest, settest thy hands unto, for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and, and with the blasting, with the mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Then look at verse 27, 27 through 29. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emrods and with the, the scrabs and scabs and with the itch and Whereof thou cannot be healed and the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Whoa. And thou shalt grope at noonday and as the blind gropeth in darkness and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore and no man shall save thee. Look at 35. Verse 35. So he says, the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the sore box that, that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Look at verse 58 through 61. 58 through 61. If thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed." Now, we can readily see from these scriptures that sickness is a curse 
of the law. I mean, you saw, you saw it over and over and over again. There's no doubt about that. That sickness is, is a part of this curse for disobeying God, uh, God's law. He says, you know, uh, it makes it very clear that, you know, these dreadful diseases that, you know, enumerated here, that in fact, every sickness, he said, every disease, according to, uh, to the sixth verse, verse, 